What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video. And while we're still on a topic of asynchronous code, in this video, we're going to talk about promises. Now, before we continue, let me just give you some useful pointers. So the main purpose of using promises is to avoid callback hell that we encountered in a previous video. And essentially, it allows us to write async code in a synchronous fashion. With that said, since we also have a sync await in the JavaScript, a common practice is to use promises with a sync await, which we're going to cover in the upcoming videos, since a sync await provides even cleaner syntax. Also, a lot of times you'll be just using a method or a function provided by the library or the browser API that returns a promise, not setting it up yourself. Why am I telling you all of this? Simply because I want you to understand that, yes, it is important to learn general concepts of promises. But what's more important, at least in my opinion, is to get comfortable using them, or in other words, consuming them. Something we're going to do in the following videos. So don't be surprised if you find our bare bones example not very useful. So long story short, if you're confused about some concepts, just keep watching the series, and hopefully I'll be able to provide you with some useful examples where you can see why promises are better than straight up callbacks. And once I'm done with my long intro, let me annoy you a bit more and share with you the main principles of promises. So in JavaScript, promise is a object that returns a value, which you hope to receive in the future, but not now. And commonly used analogy is this one. Imagine you are in a fast food restaurant and you just completed your order for the sake of simplicity. Let's say you ordered just one milkshake. And once you're done with your payment, most likely you don't get the item right away. Instead, you get a receipt, which is a promise by the restaurant that once the item is ready, you'll get it. And once the two, three or whatever amount of minutes are up and the item is ready, you show the receipt and you get the milkshake. Now, in the bizarre world, you also might be rejected. Maybe they just realize they have no more ice cream. I know it sounds unrealistic, but just for the sake of example, let's just go with it. And the whole point is that the receipt is a promise that you will get the item eventually. Or, of course, if they cannot provide it, they have to reject it and in a non-JavaScript world, provide a refund or something along those lines. Now, in the JavaScript land, an extremely common example of using promises is going to be the HTTP request. You set up the request, and of course, you don't get the response right away because it is a asynchronous operation. Only once the server responds, you either get the data that you're looking for or you get an error because maybe the URL was wrong. And once I'm done with my long and extremely annoying monologue, let's get cracking. And as far as the setup, in order to create a promise, we need to use a constructor where we pass in the callback function with two more arguments. So below all my comments, I'm going to go with const and I'll call this promise. And we set it equal to new. So we're using the constructor. And then surprise, surprise, we go with a constructor name by the name of promise. And then in this promise constructor, we pass in another function. And in my case, I'll set it up as an R function. And in there, we're looking for two more arguments. Now, since they're arguments, as always, you can call them whatever you want. But a common practice is calling them resolve and reject. And here's the mind grenade. Essentially, these are functions. So yes, you pass in a callback function into the promise. And then these two arguments are actually functions themselves. And when it comes to promises, promises can be in either of these three states. They can either be pending, which I'm going to show you in a second. They can be rejected or they can be fulfilled. And before we continue, let me just say that once the promise goes from pending to rejected, you cannot go back. So it's not like you can go from pending to rejected and as a miracle, go back to pending and then fulfilled. No, this is a one way street. So initially, we'll always be pending. We'll be waiting for that result. And then you have either of these two choices. Either it's going to be fulfilled, which, of course, is going to be awesome, or it's going to be rejected. 
And in order to showcase that, we'll always start with a pending state. I'm going to go to console log and look for our promise. And notice in the console, now I can see my promise and check it out. So the result is undefined. Okay, that's understandable. We haven't done anything. And then as far as the state, it is pending. So that's always going to be the default setup. And then since these are functions, well, we can invoke them. And we can simply start by taking a look at the resolve. And in here we have a few options. If you want, you can pass in some kind of value. So effectively, imagine that scenario where we are pinging the server. We're trying to look for data. If you want to pass this data to your application, of course, you'll have to pass it through resolve. But first, I'm just going to show you without the data. So now notice where the promise is fulfilled. So if I open this back up, notice promise state is fulfilled, but then a result is undefined. And I'll talk about the values and how we can access them in a second. For now, I just want you to understand that, yes, a lot of times you'll be passing the data in, but nothing stops you from just invoking resolve without any data. Now, if you want to pass the data in, you simply pass it in the function as an argument. So in my case, I'm just going to go with simple string, hello world. And what do you know? Now, of course, in the console, I can see the result, hello world. And exactly the same is going to be with reject. So let me comment this out for now. And we're going to go with reject. Again, we can invoke it without any kind of data. Now in here, we're going to get the error in the console, which we'll work on in a second. And then again, let's check out the value. At the moment, it is undefined, but the state is rejected. And if I want to pass in some kind of value, in this case, again, it's going to be a string. And I'm going to go with there was an error. Of course, you can already imagine that now in the console, I'll be able to see that value. So that's nice and dandy. We have these two options. We have resolve and reject. Now let's see how we can access those values. And essentially, it's not like I can go here and say promise and dot value. And you know what? Let me uncomment resolve just so I can see something in a console eventually. But at the moment, I'll see undefined. Why? Well, because I cannot just go to the object and say, hey, get me the value. No, what happens, we need to use another methods. And those methods are dot then and dot catch. So dot then is going to be for resolve. And then dot catch is going to be for reject. So in here, let's just remove this value. I'll leave this one for now. And then we'll just go with promise. So of course, that is the name of the object that I'm getting back from the promise. And then like I said, the method to access the resolve is dot then like so. And then in dot then we pass in another function, another callback function. And as a parameter in that callback function, we can access this data. Again, let me repeat, it doesn't mean that you always have to pass in that data. But if you are passing the data, in order to access it, we need to go with dot then. And then inside of dot then we pass in another callback function. And of course, since this is a parameter, you can call it whatever you please, call it Bugs Bunny, call it vegan food truck, it doesn't matter. In my case, I'm just going to say data. And then in here, in a callback function body, of course, you can set up whatever functionality you want. And what is the most basic functionality? Of course, it is simple console log. And here, if I go with data, now, of course, once I save, I can see that my promise is fulfilled. Okay, we already knew that. And then what do you know? In a console, I have hello world. Why? Well, because this is the data that I'm passing in. And just to showcase that we can pass whatever we want. In my case, I'm going to go with array. And then let's go with these three values. And of course, now in a console, I see the array. So that's as far as the resolve. And when it comes to reject, the idea is exactly the same. However, in this case, we need to go with dot catch. So not dot then, but we're looking for dot catch. So if I go here with catch, same idea, we pass in the callback function. And a common convention is to call this parameter error. And again, as far as functionality, we'll simply go with log. And then we'll look for that error. And now, of course, you can see that the promise was rejected because we invoked reject. 
And as far as the value, we can see the string in a console. And you're probably looking at it and you're like, okay, what is this guy smoking? So yes, I understand there's two arguments. Yes, we can nicely access the data. But what would be the use case? The idea is that there's going to be some kind of condition. And based on that condition, you'll either get the data so you'll successfully resolve the promise, you'll fulfill it, or it's going to get rejected. So again, imagine the scenario where you're pinging the server. And then if you get the data back, then you go with resolve, and then you pass in that data to your application using dot then. And then if there was an error, then of course, you rejected. Now, since I don't want to go through the hassle of setting up the HTTP request, I'm just going to show you with a simple example, where we have some kind of value, and then we generate a random number. And then if the random number matches the one that I set up as my value, then of course, we'll resolve it, we'll say, yep, we were successful. And if it doesn't match, then of course, we'll reject it. Just to give you a simple example, where we set up the promise based on the condition. And I'm going to start over here by creating a new variable. I'll call this value, and I'll set it equal to two. And then back in my promise, I'm actually going to set up a random number. And I'll do that by creating a variable called this random, and I'll set it equal to math floor right away. So I'll make sure that we always round down, then we go with math random, and then we multiply this by three. And effectively, this will always give me numbers between zero, one and two. So every time I'll refresh the browser, I should get one of those values. And then of course, if it matches, we'll do one thing. And if it doesn't match, then of course, we'll do something else. And as far as the logic, I'll simply say if, and I'm going to look for my random. And if it is equal to the value, then of course, I want to resolve my promise. So effectively, we will fulfill it. And in here, we can just uncomment it. And then as far as the value, I'll just pass in a simple string of you guessed correctly. And if the numbers doesn't match, then we simply set up else. And let's just write a wrong number, wrong number. Now I'll save. And here in the console, I can see the wrong number. And if you want to double check the functionality, you can simply take a look at the random one. So log and random. And it looks like it was a good idea to console log the random, since I wasn't particularly bright and didn't invoke the random method. And now, of course, you can see that the value is one, it doesn't match, I have the wrong number. But if I keep on refreshing the browser, eventually, of course, my promise is going to be fulfilled. And I'll see in a console, you guessed correctly. And not to be redundant, but if you're looking at it, and you're like, well, I still don't see how promises are easier to use than callbacks. Just keep watching the series. Since in the upcoming videos, we'll build some more useful examples.